Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar from Brentwood, Essex, England. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for all my subscribers and those people who buy me a coffee. I've bought some chemicals with that lately. Thank you very much. Well today I'm going to show you two cameras which I've got on loan. Famous brand, the Exacta, made in Germany by the German engineers and we're going to talk about those because these are very interesting cameras. The Exacta Verex have been on the market for years, and, but these are 1950s and 1960s, and then they gradually went out of favour. And the original one I've got here is the Exacta Verex 2A. Now this one, it's got loads and loads of German engineering on it, which I think is far too over-engineered. You look at the the wonderful knobs and things, but we'll see what it's all about. It's a single lens reflex with a focal plane shutter, and there's nothing modern about it, in which case I mean you have to manually close and open the aperture as you wish by pushing down here and turning the aperture ring until you see against the little red index which aperture you want. So that one says f8 now and this goes up to 2.8 because this is both of them are tessar lenses four element construction and this is a tessar 2.8 50 millimeter and it's interchangeable lens with a bayonet fitting now to get the bayonet off you've got to push this little lever here and then you unbayonet it but look at the size of the hole it's extremely small compared with modern day standards and that is one of the mistakes they made because the exit pupil here has to be very small to fit into the hole and you have to have a tapering lens to get in that small hole so to make extra lenses especially long telephotos in very wide angles was difficult optically difficult so on the lens we've got this, a button here which is releases the shutter and we have the focus in here nice smooth action and it should be because it's German <laughs> it's got a depth of field scale here so if you look you can put, it, put your distance here in meters and feet and you can calculate how much sharpness you're going to have as per usual so if we say it's three foot there and you've got an aperture of f8 you look f8 this side and it says 3.3 meters and you look f8 that side and it goes to 2.5 or 2.6 meters so that little zone is the zone of sharp acceptable sharp focus as your depth of field this is the this is the a button here, and this one opens and closes your lens for for ease of focusing and closes down again. So that's like a, you've got a preset aperture. So if we put it to f8, stop it down here. It's it's stopped down. It's quite dark. But if you if you open that lens like that, the lens is at full aperture. And when it closes down, I mean the shutter goes, it goes a dark of course. But you can turn that lever and it opens the lens for viewing. Here we have a mirror. It's not an instant return mirror. The mirror bumper phone looked in good condition. These are flash contacts. But they're flash contacts that I've never ever seen before. X and M. X that side, M this side, but these contacts, they're non-standard. And I haven't got a flash gun, which fits. This is the release button, and you can take the penter prism off. This is the penter prism. I mean, a, a viewing hood, not a penter prism, you can put a penter prism on. <coughs> that is the viewing hood. And you look down into it, and it's reversed left and right, of course, when you look into it. You can take that off and you can fit a pender prism. And um, let me see if we can get this 
off. You push that up. There we are. Then you take it out like that. And you can see, check the mirror. That's the focusing screen there. It's all in good condition. And then click it down gently. Get it back again. I've never taken it off before actually. So we'll see if we can fit this back again. Because it's not... That's right. Look at the engineering here. In order to, in order to get the mirror, uh, not the mirror, the magnifying glass up, you've got to push this and pull this. <laughs> it's not easy. There's loads of little flaps here to get to get in the way. This is a what you call a direct vision or sports finder there. That flap open. You 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 view and focus it down into there. Now when the lens is fitted, if we, feel, if we can fit the lens again, let it fit the right way round. Red dot to red dot. Underneath the lens is a little latch here and you can push that little latch over and it stops you from pressing it and firing the shutter. Now on the top we've got all the controls. The shutter speed and the frame count. We push this out of the way for a minute. It's very fiddly, look at that. Right, here we have shutter speed control and there's an arrow. You must follow the direction of the arrow. It goes anti-clockwise. So when you change anything, you must see the arrow going round anti-clockwise. So that is now on one fiftieth of a second. No, it's not. It's on the little minute dot. You've got to have good eyesight. It's on a thousandth. You would turn that round and watch the little dot. Now it's on one hundredth now. It's not the little line you watch, it's a tiny little dot. Now in order to get slow speeds, it's very laborious on the exact of Varex. You've got to put it to either the time or the brief time exposure here. The little black dot. And on this side is the control for where you get a delayed action and also you get your slow speeds and underneath you have your DIN German exposure film, se um, film sensitivity settings and you can put that by turning this on a very stiff thing you can put a little index against which DIN you want that's 27 there which is 400 ASA to remind you, it doesn't actually do anything because there's no meter. But this is the wonderful control which does both delayed action and the slow speeds. Now, if you want the delayed action, you have to use it against the red. And if you want the slow speeds, you have to use it against the black. But I found it very difficult to understand because there's a little C here. And there's a little red C there, and a little black C there. Where do, where do you line that up in order to choose is what I couldn't understand. Although I did read the instructions, it was extremely difficult to read the instructions on Mr. Butker's site. You turn that, and you wind, you turn that until you, it drops down into a little hole against the number, so that's, that says seven. So that may be seven seconds. And then you wind it. Yeah, that's wound. We press, we press this and take, undo that of course. Look, I'll, I'll put the latch. We'll, oh, I'll show you by opening. Look how you open these cameras. Not easy. You've got to turn this get the back open like that this is the famous film cutting knife included in the Varex 2A and I've used that pull that and it cuts the film we'll fire it off and see what happens it's, a, it's seven seconds it's giving you time exposure and then the shutter goes look at that that's um how you do the time you have to choose which you want now this if we want to if we now want to 
a slower speed, you've got to turn that. See, it's not easy to... Well, it's going now. It's extremely difficult to understand that setting, but I have got it to work to get the slow speeds. The spool is where you fit your film. Put your cassette in there, bring it across, latch it into a spool here, and then wind, and hopefully you wind it on across the cogs here. It will take up nicely. And then you have to set the number of the frames by turning this little cog here. You turn that until you, you turn that until you've got number naught into the counter here. Let's turn number or number one if you've round on that. Start on number one. Then when you take a picture, it will automatically count. Yes, that's now X on number two now. That's counting. Yes. Now, you have to set your shutter speed with it wound. So that was on brief time. If you want one hundredth of a second, I have used the hundredth. You set it there. This should give you one hundredth. But in order, to, in order to get the slow speed, you have to use that control there. It's all very, very, very intricate indeed. And to shut it, you have to be careful. You've got to pull this out and let it latch in. And make certain it's in, otherwise the back door might come open. Well, it's, I think it's a bit over-engineered. Then they brought out a cheaper version slightly less engineering on it, which is this one, which is the Exactor Varex 500. As the name suggests, it only goes to a 500th of a second. And it's got a less expensive Tessar lens, because this lens only goes to 3.5. Look how much smaller that is. To get it 2.8 to 3.5, how much smaller that is, Compared with the 281, you've still got a, a, a lever here for the bayonet under it. You've still got the small exacta hole. You've got X and M, uh, X and F synchronization, but this time you've got the standard plug holes for your flash. X is electronic flash, F is for focal plane flash bulbs, which we don't use now. So I I only plugged it into there and it actually worked. The mirror is again not, inter not interchangeable. I mean, it's not re what you call not re um, instant return. Get my words out in a minute. You can remove this. Now, this is a pentaprism. You can remove that. Now, I'm pushing that down and that one comes out. There. There's the focusing screen. The pen, this is a penta prism now, not the not the reflex hood as we have on the Varex 2A. Penta prism. Push that in gently. Let's make certain it's seated in yes, gently. So you look through here and this one. Now again, you wind it round. So that's round. You follow this again anti-clockwise in the direction of the arrow until you see the shutter speed you want. So we can put it to maximum, which is a 500th. We put the lens back on. We don't follow the little dot. Everything's extremely small. <coughs> These Germans, they must have had good eyesight. There. And this is the release button here. That's on a 500th now. And I have taken a picture with this. The lenses are extremely sharp. Now again, it's not easy to get slow speeds because there aren't any. The answer is, it only goes to 1 60th, no, 1 30th of a second with a flash synchronization here, which is about 1 40th. Then you've got brief time. So if you want, if you want one second, you've got to do it yourself. 
one a second like that and count the seconds yourself if you want two seconds one a second two a second because that doesn't do anything that just reminds you what film speed sensitivity you've got in there's no slow speed dial on that now to set your frame counter on here you've got a little ratchet arrangement with a little window again extremely small so you turn that until you're on number naught. Then here to open this one, again it's not easy, you pull down this little latch here to get it open and the, I had great difficulty to open this camera. Um, you see, if, I don't think we're going to be successful I'd rather be here oh, to get it open because these it's very very stiff indeed see how difficult it is you've got good fingernails and this time you don't you don't pull that up because that that is just a, a reminder of what type of film you got in black and white tunks and buns or colour doesn't do anything I don't think that I've, I I only got it open by pulling this it, it doesn't want to come open. No. Nope. This is the Verex 500. I have taken, say, pictures. The lenses are very sharp. The Tessar lenses are extremely sharp. But these are so fiddly to use. With this one, it won't fit any standard flash plug. Can't use it with the flash. There's no standard flash plug to fit it in. And in order to get the slow speed, you've got all this fiddling around here. Dreadful. So these are on loan. So I'm going to give them back to my friend now. And um, I'm rather pleased to get rid of them, actually. <laughs> but anyway, with a little rather garbled explanation, this is the over-engineered German Exacta cameras. Thanks for watching and hopefully my video will be a bit better explained next time. See you again.